Hey, sup. I want to share what I did to prepare for my newborn child. I had a newborn about a month ago, so it's still sort of fresh in my mind. This video in particular is for one of my friends who's about to have a newborn, so um, I wanted to get this video out quickly, so I'll be reading most of my video notes. Um, this video is a little bit longer than my other videos, so I'll be creating sections on the bottom so you can skip around to what you want to watch. And I'll be putting some of the packing lists uh, in the description for reference. By the way, if you're watching this because you're preparing for a newborn, then congratulations. Uh, the main themes and topics are uh, preparing for baby transportation to the hospital, uh, baby care, release of responsibilities, uh, getting your home ready uh, to receive the baby and preparing uh, for the hospital trip uh, or stay itself uh, and the birth. For baby transportation, uh, this is really uh, important, and especially if you're driving, since most hospitals won't let you go home uh, with the baby if the baby isn't safe. So um, they'll have a guard there and the guard will inspect you and your ride home. Uh, you'll need a rear-facing uh, or infant uh, car seat. Uh, it's easier if you get those detachable ones that you can go from a stroller to the car seat, and so you don't need to buckle and unbuckle the, the child. Um, and you just go into the base station in the car. Um, you should know how to use it. Uh, practice, you know, beforehand. You know, you can use a doll or just, uh, you know, just uh, practice with the instructions. Um, and have it secured before you go to the hospital. So you don't have to mess around with it um, while you're at the hospital securing it to your vehicle. Uh, your child uh, should have uh, go, go home clothes uh, that are long sleeve, uh, not any short sleeve or you know dresses or whatever, because uh, those straps will um, cut into their very delicate skin. Um, a blanket and of course a diaper bag Diaper bag, you shouldn't need to use this on the way home from the hospital, but just in case you live a little bit farther away or it takes a little bit longer to get home or if you break down on the way home, it's nice to have. Uh, of course, you got your hand sanitizer, clean surface area. We have a non-disposable one with my wife. Uh, disposable ones are nice if you're in a public area or if your baby has a blowout, when your baby has a blowout, it's nice to just uh, put that down and then throw everything away when you're done. Of course, then you got everything to clean up and uh, dry uh, your your baby, make sure they're safe. Uh, got some extra gloves here in case you can't clean your hands, um, or if you have some dirty stuff, or or if you have a friend or family member that's changing your baby uh, for you, it's nice to uh, give that to them as a courtesy. We got doggy bags. Doggy bags are nice, so then um, you can toss all the dirty diapers in there, and if you have multiple diapers, you can throw them in a trash bag. Uh, each uh, outfit, because your baby will. Uh, blow out and um, get things dirty. Uh, it should be in a its own Ziploc bag, so then you can take the clean one out, put the dirty one in, and then you don't have to worry about uh, stinky clothes uh, in your vehicle. Uh, then you got some extra formula. You know, if you got powder or or uh, these pre-made ones, don't forget the tops. Uh, you just have that also in case mom can't feed the baby, then you can help feed it. Um, I, I like using the strap with the the bag also. Then. I can just strap the bag wherever I'm at, uh, keep it sort of handy and stable uh, so it's not moving around when I'm uh, changing the baby. Then I also have these extra bags just because uh, extra bags are nice. You know, I can throw the uh, dirty clothes in there and um, keep everything organized. For baby care, uh, this is generally required um, from the hospital uh, to let you go home. So uh, a pediatrician for the newborn, uh, you know, your insurance through work or, you know, if you have some type of insurance. Um, I also recommend that you prepay for the baby's, um, you know, the, the baby delivery uh, before you go to the hospital. So, you know, you register for uh, the uh, baby and the, have the birth at the hospital and pay for that ahead of time. Release responsibilities. Uh, so plan for any children or dependents that you have uh, responsibility over. Uh, make sure that they have a place that they can stay or uh, someone that they can be with for a number of days. Um, 
and that time may be extended. So be prepared for that. Um, any bills that you have, I recommend having them on auto pay uh, so that they're covered. Time will just fly by when you're in the hospital um, or uh, when you get home from the hospital. Uh, leave from work. Uh, if you can, take leave from work. Uh, plan it around the time of your, uh, your baby's birth. But um, uh, just know that there are different types of leave. And uh, for the mom, uh, they'll have like disability leave and then their medical leaves and maternity leaves. Um, for yourself, uh, know if there's any like caregiver or secondary caregiver leave. Uh, those types of things you want to ask about, uh, you know, ahead of time uh, while uh, you have the time. Prepare your home. Uh, take out the garbage, clean the house, uh, prepare the baby sleeping area. Uh, have bottles ready. Uh, if you have a pump, pump ready. Have a separate bottle cleaner uh, so you don't use the same uh, bottle cleaner for the bottles as of your rest of your food. Um, a bottle sanitation, it could just be like a pot um, or if you have like one of those fancy steamers, it could be that. Uh, baby formula, uh, even if your plan is to use mom's milk, um, it may or may not happen. So just be prepared uh, for that. Uh, just have your uh, formula ready. Uh, and then the parent or uh, caregiver food plan, uh, your food plan. Um, you know, if you're cooking, if mom normally cooks, uh, you may need to think about it, especially if she's incapacitated. Uh, a lot of things happen, so you just want to be ready. Um, you may want to have easy food ready um, or a delivery food plan, um, whether that's your friends or uh, some program that you have. Uh, there are special ones uh, out there and um, even, uh, you know, like, uh, I didn't know this, but there's like Asian ones for uh, those that uh, don't have those uh, Asian moms that give you, uh, you know, like those, those broths or whatever. Um, there are uh, restaurants and food places that uh, do that for you, like all those long cookings and, and whatnot. Uh, baby changing area, uh, like having a couple of these here. Because baby's going to go while you're changing them. Uh, get all over the place. Won't have to change everything. Uh, this, because they're going to spit up while you're changing them. Uh, Vaseline for diaper rash, diapers. Um, this is the bulb syringe because they spit up. Um, wet wipes. Uh, we have our vitamin D because they're on their back anyways. So just easy just to do the drop, drop a day. And this is a, a light. Um, just so we don't have to turn on the, the house lights while we're changing in the middle of the dark. Baby sleeping area, really shouldn't have anything inside here uh, except for uh, something on top so it's easier to change uh, this in case there's an accident. Uh, prepare for your trip to the hospital. Uh, register with whatever hospital you're going to or whatever your birthing plan is. Uh, know what services they have there. Uh, take the hospital tour, know which floor to go to, where to park, how to get to the area. Take pictures of whatever materials or reminders that you have. Um, save it in an album, like on your phone, so you have it handy. Uh, know what's provided at the hospital. Know what amenities are available. Um, like if there's, there's a lactation consultant, if it's provided by the hospital. Um, know if there's a place for the support person to sleep and stay. Um, know what the process is going to be if there's a C-section. Uh, just things can happen all of a sudden, and then your regular birth turns into a C-section birth. Uh, so tip, uh, the support person should be wearing short sleeves or have short sleeves on also. Uh, that makes it easier for you to uh, accompany during the C-section. Plan and rehearse your drive to the hospital. Uh, check the traffic before you go. Uh, even if you know um, how to get there, I recommend putting it into your navigation anyways. Uh, just in case there's an accident, then you can detour around it. Um, plan your routes, whether you're coming from work or home, um, or if you're away from home, uh, what, what those would be, you know, dropping off your kids or um, other dependents. Um, if someone's picking up your kids, like from school, uh, what those uh, things would be and how they would uh, play out. Uh, also, different times of the day, you know, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, uh, decide whether it's better to go home first if you're away from home um, or just straight to the hospital and someone picks up the stuff that you have packed. Um, or if you drive separately, you know, to the hospital, uh, 
you know, you, you should have time, like when it's time to go to the hospital, um, you should know the signs and symptoms for the timing, you know, like contractions, if the water's broke, um, and so on. Uh, so uh, if you have these plans uh, ahead of time, it will help you choose and make the right decision. Um, and actually drive the main route to your hospital at least once uh, prior to the actual trip to the hospital. Um, you don't know what state of mind you'll be in or what time of day it'll be when the baby decides to come out. So um, it's just easier if all this stuff is planned out. Oh, and if you're um, doing a baby moon, just remember to um, stay close to civilization because the baby could um, come out early, especially if it's being disturbed. Uh, so stay close to civilization. Hospital go bag. Um, this is for newborns, so it's slightly different than just your regular hospital uh, go bag. So what makes it different is the way that it's packed. Um, it's not as compact and uh, just grab and go. Uh, it, the items are more uh, segregated for ease of use. And so you, you could have more stuff because you're planning on multiple nights and you are planning to not leave the hospital. Um, so I have a three bag system, a wheeled bag, a backpack and food. Of course, um, food is optional depending on what your plan is. Um, and so is all of this, but uh, these are just ideas. This is the wheeled luggage bag, mostly clothes and hygiene. It should be easily identifiable and uh, easy to find in your house. So they can just grab it and go or somebody if they have to go to your house can just grab it and, and go. Um, there should be a luggage tag on it, so uh, it can be identified as yours. Uh, it helps the hospital staff, so if, if it's just mom, they can just uh, easily pair it with, um, with her. Uh, extra power cord, got some pens. Uh, pens uh, should be ballpoint pens uh, because uh, there's some stuff that needs to be signed and they have that copy paper, so uh, that, that works well with the copy paper. And then also a, a dry erase pen, uh, help write notes uh, for the staff. Uh, they usually have some kind of board, especially if you're there for more than 24 hours. Um, slippers, very essential. Uh, your, your clothes, change of clothes, uh, pajamas, uh, very essential because it does get cold at night and you want to be comfortable. Um, hanger, even if you saw the hanger uh, in the uh, hospital tour, your room might not have one. So remember, bring that course your laundry bag and extra bags uh, extra bags are are really nice because you just never know um, I actually have like 50 of those uh, they're just handy all over the place um, toiletries uh, don't forget to bring uh, some type of pain medication uh, pain medication is important for the support person because you are not the patient so <laughs> Uh, you're not going to have it in, unless um, you want to pay like $200 for a couple Advil or Tylenol. Uh, that's what you, you should have. Um, also, nail clippers, you know, toothbrush, uh, you know, quick dry towel. Quick dry towel is nice. So when you're coming home, you don't have to worry about it uh, smelling. Um, and then, of course, you know, your mask, hand sanitizer, uh, and any paper copies um, uh, that are like the hospital requirements. So, we are required to either show our vaccine card or uh, proof that, you know, we don't have COVID. Uh, of course, you, you know, if you have allergies or, you know, your hospital uh, bills that you've already paid um, ahead of time just to, to have it so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that's what helps. I forgot to mention that one of the cables for mom's phone should be uh, a little bit shorter because some of these new hospital beds have a USB outlet on them and you don't want her swimming in a really long cable. Uh, additionally, they should be all labeled. Uh, in case you leave them somewhere, uh, it'll come back to you, hopefully. This is the hospital bag backpack. Uh, I like to use this mostly for administrative items and additional items for a support person. Uh, the backpack is great because it goes with the wheeled bag. Uh, it gives you a free hand. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, latching it to your wheeled bag. Um, uh, also, this should be easily identifiable and tagged, uh, so uh, just in case you misplace it, the hospital can give it back to you. Uh, it needs to have all the electronics for 
um, any device that you have a uh, battery pack, battery packs great because uh, it makes it so you, you're not latched to the hospital power. So in the tour, you, you might see an outlet near where you're supposed to be, but that may not work in the room that you get. So um, that gives you extra flexibility. Also a extension cord. I like having an extension cord like this where it's flat on one end, uh, you know, it has USB, uh, so makes it a little bit more handy. Uh, then, of course, all your electronics. Um, I like having these um, uh, ear pods uh, so that, um, you know, you can uh, take calls or, or anything like that and you don't have to disrupt people. Um, this is my keyboard, uh, iPad. Uh, th this right here is a clipboard, the clipboard uh, that can open up and store all the stuff that the hospital gives you. Uh, you can sign stuff on there and uh, it's handy. Of course, the extra uh, pens, uh, ballpoint pens, because uh, you need ballpoint pens to sign stuff. Um, and when they have that copy paper, it helps. And then, uh, of course, another dry erase pen. I like having a journal. Um, my journal is uh, uh, journaling all the things that we experienced during the time. And um, just having a record of it and going over it, because you're going to forget everything later. Uh, anything that the doctor tells you also, you're going to forget. Uh, so uh, writing things down or taking note of it somehow, you know, if it's on your phone or whatever, is great. But um, I've actually gone back in time uh, with, with my wife on like the firstborn. So uh, this is actually sort of sort of nice. Of course, all of these uh, uh, medical whatever. So tissues is nice, you know, gloves, uh, band-aids, neosporin, uh, cough drops. Cough drops is great because um, uh, it is really dry in a hospital. So uh, you don't want to be coughing and having the nurses think that you're sick to uh, kick you out. Um, of course, extra pain meds, uh, your caffeine, very important. Uh, water bottles, uh, wet wipes. You can actually put like the large water bottle and wet wipes into your roller bag uh, so it's not so heavy. Um, uh, this I like. Uh, this is just a strap and a carabiner. Uh, this allows me to latch my... Um, uh, backpack onto any like pole or bar, uh, just get it off the floor or make it easier to assess um, or access. And then also some extra bags. Uh, these extra bags I just always have. I forgot to mention floss, not only the most important part of brushing your teeth, but uh, if you get something stuck, it really sucks. Uh, food bag. Um, it's nice to have a food bag uh, available, especially for the support person. Uh, because the patient or mom will be taken care of by the hospital, but not the support person. Uh, we are actually fortunate to have uh, friends bring us some food. Uh, but if having outside or delivered food isn't part of your plan, uh, or if the hospital doesn't allow you in and out privileges, like if there's a global pandemic or something, uh, and you don't want to eat the hospital food or vending machine food, uh, then it's nice to bring some familiar foods. Uh, a little embarrassingly that first night, um, I did eat out of the vending machine um, just because I crave something a little bit differently than what I pack. So hopefully uh, this list can help you be more uh, prepared. Uh, I found that savory or salty foods uh, were better than sweet foods. Uh, something to think about uh, if you have um, uh, a lot of uh, ready to eat snacks because a lot of those are sweet uh, or on the sweet side. Uh, so if you are eating uh, hospital food, uh, remember that hospital food sucks, and by that I mean that it's bland. Uh, they don't like mixing a lot of uh, flavors and uh, different uh, ingredients uh, due to allergies and uh, salt intake. Uh, so bring your own uh, salt and pepper uh, or favorite spices uh, that help might help. Uh, bring your favorite uh, ketchup or sauce. Uh, you can get little packets from the store or you know just have uh, some sauce. Uh, with you. I really recommend bringing some type of like plate, like a, a light, uh, unbreakable, microwavable plate. Um, so you don't have to worry about dropping it and, you know, making a big mess. Um, and uh, th this, you, you'd, you know, put your leftovers uh, or any, you know, food that you're trying to prepare with your little uh, packets or things that you bring. It's nice not having to like eat out of a can and you can just eat it on a plate. Um, and then don't forget your utensils, because uh, even if you're doing delivery, um, it's nice not having to use those little um, flimsy utensils. 
Um, I recommend the food that you bring uh, be shelf stable. Uh, so you don't have to use like the community fridge at the hospital to store it uh, if there is one. And you don't have to worry about it spoiling or pulling it out of the fridge, like remembering to pull it out of the fridge uh, before you go. So you can just have it all packed and ready. And you can just grab the food bag and go. Um, so savory snacks like, you know, beef jerky, chips, uh, those pre-made packets like the uh, tuna, chicken salad uh, and crackers. Um, it's sort of weird, the things that you crave in a hospital uh, opposed to home. Like I would never eat those at home, but at the hospital, uh, that's, what, that's what I craved. Um, you know, peanut butter and jelly and crackers. Uh, I say crackers because, you know, bread can go bad. So uh, crackers uh, last a little bit better. Um, I really like this uh, uh, pork jerky from Costco. Uh, if you can eat pork, this is uh, uh, what saved the day uh, while we were there. Uh, sweet snacks we didn't like so much, of course, because um, uh, maybe because you're sitting in the room or uh, the other foods that we're eating. Uh, I, I brought a bunch of chocolate and you know, just other sweet things, and th those didn't do so well, uh, except for these. These were the freeze-dried mangoes. Regular mangoes, um, she, did, she didn't want to eat, and um, freeze-dried ones uh, worked pretty well. Uh, I also wish that I brought um, some type of cereal and milk um, just to have a regular breakfast opposed to the snacks or just a weird snack breakfast. Um, uh, our hospital had uh, milk for free, but you can also get boxed milk uh, instead of... Um, uh, worrying about like you know, refrigeration, uh, snack bars. Uh, they were good, um, but they weren't good at the hospital uh, while we we're just sitting there. Uh, they're only good on the way home. Uh, like there was no craving at all to eat the snack bars while we we're in the hospital. Um, maybe because we weren't moving around or something like that, uh, or the other foods that we we're eating, but just no craving for it until after. So just leave those in the car. Uh, they'll be good for later. Um, and I wish I would have brought uh, those just add hot water foods, you know, or the easy foods like, um, you know, those cups of mac cheese or uh, instant noodles or, um, you know, just any easy food, uh, you know, it could be like red beans and rice or, or whatever. But uh, the hospital will usually have a microwave or hot water available somewhere. Uh, so I just sort of wish that that was an option. So thanks for watching. I just wanted to share what uh, worked for me. I'd like to know what worked for you. Um, if you've gone through this before, uh, what did you do to prepare for your hospital stay? Um, how were you successful? What things uh, did you really wish that you prepared for? So leave a comment, uh, help us improve our systems, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care.